Welcome back. Today I am in the garden and we are going to do some pruning because it's time. It's time to reduce the vigor of our trees so they stay small enough to fit in these grocery row gardens. This apple tree right here was pruned. As you remember, I did a video called Prune Like a Psychopath. Cut. I think there's a bug on the lens. There is. <laughs> this apple tree right here was pruned at the very beginning of the year when we put it in. And if you remember my video, Prune Like a Psychopath, I went around and I just lopped the tops off of trees. Here is the prune, right here. That's where I pruned it. I cut it and all of this growth has been in the first part of the year here. I like to see this. This tree is going to stay under control because we got a good start on it. But if I want to reduce the vigor further, I'll come in here and take off branches that I don't think are strong enough or branches that are in the wrong place. I don't feel like doing anything to this one right now, except maybe this guy right here is not where I want him. Yeah. So this now is going to get thrown somewhere else because I don't want the leaves to rot down and feed this tree and increase its vigor anymore. So the prunings from that tree go to feed other things. This is an apricot tree. Look at how much taller than me it is. This tree has grown close to six feet since we tried to get it under control. It was cut right here originally. There's the cut. This is all new growth since maybe February? I woke up in March, April. I'm telling you, you've got to keep these things under control. This is ridiculous. This huge piece here, so that whole piece is coming off. We don't need that much tree. Now, I don't like that this is taller than me either. It, it, it makes me feel insecure. So, we're taking the whole thing back. When you prune during the summer like this, it decreases the vigor of the tree. If you prune a tree, say, February, right before, right before it wakes up, as the sap is rising, that tree just goes boom and grows like crazy. You prune your peach tree right at the beginning of the year before the sap rises and it will go insane, straight up. But if you prune it at this time of year, it's got all this active growth. It's got all the work that it's done to build these leaves and branches. And you just took it away when it's actively growing, which will decrease the vigor. And if you want fruit trees to stay under control, you've got to decrease the vigor. So I don't want this tree to get much taller than this. So I'm pruning it right here, right across. And I'm not worried about killing it. I mean, you saw how much it grew already this year. Now. I feel better about it. This tree is going to stay under control. This is, this is the entire branch touching the ground and there was another 16 or so inches on it. So it, it grew more than my height. This, this branch was super vigorous and it had to go. It had to go because we don't want a 20 foot tall apricot tree here in the ah. middle of the gardens. So I'm feeding it right here. Something else can eat it. A zinnia can eat it. A dying broccoli can eat it. A rather happy rabbit-eye blueberry can eat it. This peach tree is about perfect. The middle of it is down here. It was cut where I needed it to be, but there's some little crossing branches in here. We want to maintain this vase shape. 
I could not find my pruners that were sharp. So I sharpened these as best as I could, but they're they're wearing out. I've used them so much that they're beat. And I bought a new pair and then I lost it, which is pretty normal for me. But I don't want a bunch of crossing branches through the middle here. You want to kind of leave this this vase shape open. Very important with peaches to prune them so they actually make a good shape. You get more sunlight through the middle and more air through the middle, you will get better results on your peaches. And this tree right here, coming out from here, it's gonna get thicker and thicker and I can get it to branch and go sideways. Really, there's, there's not a lot of serious mistakes you're probably gonna make with pruning. I mean, your biggest mistake is to be so tentative that you don't prune at all unless you're going for great big trees. If you start some trees from seed and you want them to just run and go as big as you like, that's fine. You can do that. But if you want to keep them under control, like say you want six different varieties of mangoes in your backyard, you can keep them pruned at like six to eight foot and get that six different varieties. But if you plant one mango tree in your backyard and you let it run to its complete height, 60 feet or so, the whole backyard will be shaded. So you have to keep that in mind. Do you want a bunch of varieties? Do you want things in picking distance where you can grab it? Then you need to prune it and you need to not be afraid. You're almost certainly not going to kill the tree. I mean think of how plants get chewed up by deer. They grow back. They come back. You're just going to be a deer and prune them down with your mouth. Think of that, is that crazy? You wanna eat the tree? This apple tree right here, we cut it here. Look at how much it's grown. Something's been chewing on it too. That's normal, it's called nature. Nature is mean. So, I don't want all this growth. I want to decrease the vigor. I don't want these trees getting hugely out of control on me. I want them to stay smaller. So these branches here, I'm gonna go throw over here to feed the chaya and the Everglades tomatoes. My goal for this tree is to have it at about this height so if I keep decreasing the vigor, think of it like a hedge. How do you prune your hedge? You prune it where you want it. You don't want the tree to get huge. You don't want your individual hedge plants to turn into giant trees. People keep these ficus hedges, right? Ficus hedges are all over South Florida. If you don't prune a ficus, it turns into a gigantic, beautiful, amazing climbing tree. But if you pack them together into a hedge and prune them, You've got a nice dense hedge. It's just, what do you want your trees to do? Make them do it. What did I find? Are they blueberries? Are they blueberries? Blueberries? There you go. I'm gonna take them off. What? What else do you find? Oh, oh, I see. You've got good eyes. That's not a very good-looking strawberry, though. You're gonna eat that one. You're giving me the blueberry back? <laughs> okay. Eat it. Oh, you want the green part off? Is it a good one? Do you want to just take the handful? Take the whole handful or you want to do them one at a time?
these cannas are now taller than me and they're starting to bloom some really pretty little blooms here I like these large crazy varieties of canna not so much because they're pretty but because they make good chop and drop they create a lot of growth and I could turn them into mulch to feed the ground and I've been throwing them around my fruit trees and deliberately planting them around them on purpose let's take a look at this apple here this sideways branch I like it I like it going sideways through the middle here this one's going sideways too this is getting a little vigorous in the middle here I'm not sure how much I want it to do that I'll take it back a little bit see what happens this side of the tree is way more vigorous than this side of the tree this is finally starting to get some sap in it but this one's outgrown it so I'm just kind of wait and see what happens on it if you don't feel like you're ready to do something don't just wait and see what happens this apple I think is a little simpler got a little more normal shape to it I don't know that I want this branch going off sideways here I'll take that and I don't want it to get too tall so we'll just take these guys back just head them off a little bit think like a hedge we want a hedge. That ought to do. Give them a little more light in here. There we go. This pear is getting too vigorous. Take some of this top off. I don't think we need that that branch there there we go now we've headed it off under control about the level I want it to bush out at and make fruit for me now I'm not gonna claim I'm an expert on pruning but I've done a good bit of reading and I've seen enough through my pruning to understand that if you can slow the trees down, if you can prune them in the right season, it makes a big difference. I've seen a difference between peach trees that are not pruned, that are just a great big dense mass of branches and not enough fruit, and peach trees that have been pruned by a professional where they've got that big open space in the middle. No. And, you know, it's not rocket science. No. It's about timing and it's about actually doing it and not being afraid to prune. Right? So, if you want to learn more about pruning, no. uh, I would check out Ann Ralph's book, Grow a Little Fruit Tree. I will put a link below this video. That's the best overview, uh, understanding on how to keep trees under control. And in the permaculture garden systems that I've been creating here, what I call the grocery row systems, the trees and the vegetables are integrated together into the same system. And in order to do that, we can't allow the trees to get massive and to take over the whole system. The trees are just one part of the ecosystem. Can you pruning for me? And they're going to work in here because they're getting tended from the time they're small. They're not going to get gigantic. This is not going to become a canopy system. A big problem with a lot of food forests is it develops a canopy. We're not going to let these develop a full canopy. They're going to be enough to shade the vegetables underneath and keep them from the worst of the Alabama weather, but they're not going to get so big that they shade out everything beneath and kill it off and you end up with that deep dark woods look. This is a perpetual set of disturbances and opening to the light and making the trees work for us. You do a little bit of effort and 
it totally makes a huge difference over time. So thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out the links below. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spot Oh, you're not giving it to me? Can I have one? Okay. Mmm, mm, it's good, isn't it? Those are rabbit eyes. Good job. All gone. I don't know if that one's any good. It's not quite ready yet. Almost.